suffering, pain, and shame. And it wasn't on his behalf, but it was on our behalf oh, wow. that he was willing to make the sacrifice. And so the text says he was willing not to spare his own son. Yes. We need to understand that God, he was willingly, willingly punishing himself mm. to bring forth victory and salvation to my life. Mm. And if that he was willing to do that to himself. Yes. If he was willing to sacrifice torture, torment, and experience the worst, then you know God is planning to give us his best. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, yes. why have you forsaken me? And sometimes in life, maybe we feel like God has forgotten us. Maybe we feel like in our situation, there's no help, there's no hope. Yes. But I want you to understand that God's love, yes. God was so drawn to deliver us that it didn't matter what he had to sacrifice. He sacrificed his own life. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I want you to know that that was not the end, but that was just the beginning. Yes. And then if you look at verse number 19, it goes away from a point of defeat, and it transitions to a point of victory. Come on, read, still read a little bit with the struggle that Jesus experienced on the cross. Psalm 22 mm -hmm. and 1. Keep reading. Come on. And it reads, Why do you remain so silent? Why do you ignore my cries for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you, you hear my voice, but I find no relief. Come on, keep reading. Yet you are holy. The praises of Israel surround your throne. Our ancestors trusted in you, and you rescued them. Listen, I told you that body, it was a decoy. And that it, it was absorbing all of the, the, the sin, and God brought that within. And that he was nailing it all of that to the cross. And that when we look at it, Look at, uh, look at Colossians for me. Colossians 1, 17 through 20. Colossians 1, 17 through 20. Don't, don't lose your place in Psalm 22. Yes. What does Colossians 1, 17 and th through 20 say? It reads, he is before all things. Yes. And in him all things hold together. Yes. Keep reading. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. Yes. So that in everything he might have the supremacy. Yes. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. All right. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. And God gave him up. Mm -hmm. God let death win a battle. Mm -hmm. But he turned around and he won the war. Mm. He put the poison in his vessel and banished the power of Satan, hell, and death. Yes. It was simply a setup mm -hmm. for our blessings. Yeah. Look at... Uh, Acts 2 and 23. God gave him into the hands of men to a cruel death. There was a purpose behind what God was doing as he sacrificed his life 
in the form of Christ. Mm -hmm. Come on, what's it say, man? This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. It was God's set purpose mm -hmm. and his foreknowledge. He knew this beforehand and it was predetermined. Yes. What does it say, man? And you, with the help of lawless Gentiles. Yes. Come on, read it. Help a wicked man, but put him to death by nailing him to the cross. By nailing him to the cross. Come on, read it. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Amen. So it was part of a predetermined plan that God was using to save all men. So God gave him up. The purposes of giving him up, John 3.16, we're going to see why. In John, the third chapter, there's a discussion that Jesus has with one of the Pharisees, Nicodemus. And he's trying to get him to understand something about the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. He tells him that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I need you to understand that the kingdom of God is not meat, it's not drink, it's not like this earth realm. It's not going out and having a good time in the club. It's not meat, it's not drink, it's not partying. But it's righteousness, it's peace, yes. and it's joy. Mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He told Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's the first birth. Yes. That's my mother and my father. The names are on my birth certificate. But there's another birth that's not from this earth. And that is the birth of the Spirit. And this has been made available to all humanity. So the very purpose of God subjecting himself, not sparing himself, putting everything on the line, in terms of being exposed to something he had never experienced before, it was leading to one place and one moment for one reason and one purpose. Mm. What does it say, John 3.16? Yes, for God so loved the world that... God so loved the world! Yes. I know people have said that they love you, but love is demonstrated. Love is backed up. Love is truly expressed and revealed through your action. Come on, God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him... What he was doing was setting the stage for us to be born of the Spirit, that whosoever would believe in him and what he done yes. would have everlasting life. Yes. The scripture says that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him could finally be saved. Finally be delivered. Because he dealt with the poison of my existence. That when Jesus took the poison within him, he created an antidote with his blood. And now if you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you have eternal life. Now, I'm not talking about an act of cannibalism, but if you accept the work 
of what he did on the cross. The sacrifice that he made. The blood that he shed. The tears that he cried. You call on him now. Yes. You can be saved. Come on, let's look at further the purpose of giving him up. Look at Ephesians 1 and 10, 11, and the 22nd verse. We'll skip down there. Yes. What does that say, ma'am? It reads, to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment. Yes, keep reading. To bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Hallelujah. He's bringing us together as a family mm. in Christ. You understand that at the Tower of Babel in Genesis the 8th chapter that man was scattered. Mm. But now through Jesus, the men that were scattered are now being gathered. Mm. That in Babel, in Genesis 8, there was rebellion that separated us. Mm -hmm. We're going to build a tower to the heavens. And sometimes we've got our agenda, our purpose. But we need to learn how to listen to God. So Babel brought rebellion and separation. But here Jesus, he brings connection and redemption. And so he's reversing the separation. And now, again, he's making us a family in him. Maybe some people have never had a family. Maybe they've been like an orphan. But now we can be, through Jesus, a part of the family of God. Yes. Come on. Keep reading. What does verse 22 say? 22 reads, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church. So he's the head yes. for the church. So the reason why God did what he did was not because that he liked suffering and pain. It was because he loved me so much that he was willing to prove it. He proved his love through sacrifice of himself. And the sacrifice has now made us one again in the family of God. And Christ, he is now our leader. We're no longer scattered, but now we're gathered unto God. But when I look at this, and I look at my state, God, he didn't even wait till I had it all together. And I know that's contrary to what we believe today. We believe that somehow we've got to get ourselves right before we come to God. But that's not how it works. Come on, read Romans 5 for me. 8 through 10. God's not waiting for you to get right. Yes. He did something while we were a mess, a wreck. Because of his love, it motivated him. 
Come on, what does it say? It reads, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died. Well, I got myself. No, while we were still a mess. While we were still a wreck. While we were still children of disobedience and of wrath. God began to work his craft. Even yet, while we were sinners, what happened? Christ, he died, not for the godly, but he did it for the ungodly. Come on, pick it back up and read it. Read, start reading your eight again. Come on. But God demonstrates his own love for us. In he history. demonstrates his love. He shows you. He gives you proof. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. And I know we say, oh, salvation is free. It is for you. But God paid the price. It cost him something. It cost him something. We see it through the agony of Jesus. Mm. The sacrifice, the torment, the punishment, the pain. But he didn't wait for me to get right. He didn't even wait for me. But he gave me an option to be free. Come on, keep reading. Romans 5 and 8, what does it say? Again, it reads, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? All right, keep reading. For if, we, for if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? If he did that, why I was his enemy? What do you think now he's going to do? Come on, read that last verse 10 for me again, please, ma'am. It reads, for if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? All right. Now that I'm right, what do you think he's going to do? Eyes have not seen, ears not have heard. The things that God has prepared for those that love him, but he's revealed them to us through his spirit. Mm, mm, mm. All of the promises of God. And the richness of his glory through Christ Jesus. The text says today, since he did not spare his own son, but he gave him up. Mm. He delivered him. And again, it dealt with his agenda. It had nothing to do with my state. Mm. He didn't even wait. <laughs> while I was a sinner Jesus was making me a winner the text goes on and this is the main question of, of what I want to deal with today won't he also surely give us all things Won't he give me everything I asked for if he gave me Jesus? Mm. 